Hello fellow knitters, it's Janet with BDDPatterns.com. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I'm super excited. It's a free pattern Friday and today I'm going to share with you a very easy knitting pattern that's going to help you knit up an on-trend sweater scarf. Here we go. Let's check out this pattern overview so that we can see exactly what we need to knit this beautiful sweater scarf. The technique is it's knitted flat and there are two pieces, a right and a left side that are seamed together in the back center. This pattern is rated at an easy level and it's extremely beginner friendly. The needles that you'll need are a number eight and a number 10. I recommend either a 14 or 16 inch length. The yarn is a worsted number four and I just use Karen one pound because I find that that's so available just about everywhere, especially in the U.S. I've done it here in a medium gray and you will need two skeins for all sizes. The gauge is measured by the scarf portion of this sweater scarf and that is six stitches by six rows. So that means that that's the larger needle garter stitch. The sizes are small, which is what I'll be making again today, through 3X, and that fits up to a 48 inch full bust measurement. All right guys, I'm gonna demonstrate this sweater scarf in a size small. I'm also gonna use uh, these little shorter needles only because I am crochet or knitting on a table and it is not easy to do that with 16 inch needles, although those are the, the size that I recommend as we get going because what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the sleeve and then we're gonna build out from there. So your piece will get wider. Now, we're going to do the same thing for two panels. So on one of the panels, you're gonna wanna lead with a longer tail and then, and then on the other panel, you're going to want to end with a longer tail. The end will be for sewing the center uh, seam in the back. And then, of course, the lead will be for sewing up the sleeve. Okay, let's go. So I'm going to lead with this one for uh, the seam for the sleeve. Because uh, I've already done my other one and I've ended that one with a, um, with a long tail for the center back seam. So make your slip knot. And at first this, this is gonna get in the way, but I'm telling you when you do it this way, please, there's just less mess. So we're gonna be casting on 30. Now, if you don't know how to do this fast cast on, I have a video for this. I'm not really doing stitch tutorials here. I'm doing a pattern. So if you need to learn more about my fast cast on, you can go to the playlist and I'll have the link at the end of this pattern and also in the description. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need 24 more, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Okay, as I said before, this I, I think you're going to really like this pattern. I, I tried to make it as beginner friendly as possible. So now what we're going to do is we are going to, for all sizes, this will be all sizes, we are going to lay out a one by one ribbing. Now, the thing about this is, is that I want you to knit into the first stitch and then knit into the second stitch and then do your one by one ribbing you should always be knitting into the first and last stitch. This is because later we're going to be doing an increase. So we're gonna do the first row together, which is just our one by one ribbing. And as you all know, the first row is always the funnest, right? Yep, it is. 
So just keep track of what you're doing. And I don't know how settled you guys are on needles, but I just absolutely love these needles. I'll have the link to them in the, in the description below. They're just, they're so smooth. And I've had them for years. They're Knitter's Pride needle and they needles, and they really, really have held up. I, I don't even know how long I'd have to go back and look at my receipts to tell you how long I've had them, but they're they're pretty spectacular. So, hope you all are having a good day. I'm looking forward to making this knitted sweater scarf. It's funny. My most popular video for crochet is also a sweater scarf, and her name is Sophia. So I decided to do a knitted version for everyone, and that's why I call her Sophie. Like I said, just this first row is just always whatever. But the main thing to remember here again is, is that you are knitting and if I say crochet, just forgive me, okay? I, I do both, and sometimes I forget to switch them out here when I'm talking because I'm also trying to concentrate on counting, so that's always fun, but I love it. So the main thing to remember just with this segment is to just always to knit in the first stitch. So basically you're going to um, be, you know, carrying on with the uh, knit stitch there. So you're gonna usually start with two, two knit stitches. Okay, all right, go ahead and do your one by one rows for eight more rows. So do your one by one ribbing, always starting and ending with a knit stitch, one by one ribbing in between for eight more rows and we'll meet back. Okay, we are now on row eight. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do row nine together and we're also gonna talk about the following rows because this is where it gets fun. We're going to make our sleeve. So remember, you wanna knit into the first stitch and then continue on with your one by one ribbing and one by one ribbing. If you didn't know, you can check out the video link below for a more detailed, but it's just a knit purl. And then after that, you knit as the stitch presents itself. So in other words, if it presents itself on the next row as a knit stitch, you knit. If it presents itself as a purl stitch, you purl. It's just that simple. And like I said, what's important about this pattern is to remember that you must, at this point, always knit into the first and last stitches. And I also highly recommend for this pattern again because there are so many rows and there's increases in increments get yourself a row counter <laughs> you won't regret it I use this every single day and I this is by far my favorite I've talked about it countlessly in other videos I use it for both knitting and crochet and I really wouldn't know what to do without it so here we are we're going to knit into the last stitch okay so we have now completed nine rows okay we're going into the tenth row so what's going to happen from this point forward is you're going to increase we're going to increase into the tenth row then after that we're going to do four rows of the knit in the first and last stitches one by one ribbing into the stitches in between and then on the next on the fifth stitch you're going to do your increase. So this is basically going to increase every five stitches. So on the 15th row, that's gonna be your increase row. On the 20th row, that's gonna be your increase row, and so on and so forth. And what I want you to do is I want you to continue along with that four row repeat until you reach 56 stitches across. 
but we're going to do this together so not to worry and make sure i know this tail is a little bit long i'm sure somebody has a hack for taking care of that if you do uh send it to me i'd love to see it i just keep going with it i just like make sure that i really pay attention though that i'm not like knitting with the tail so that's that's been done before but we're not going to do it today so now here we are, we're starting at row 10. And on row 10, remember I told you every fifth count of the rows is an increase. I'll do it slower, I'm sorry. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna knit one as we normally would, but don't take the stitch off the hook. Then go into the back of the stitch and then knit another one. It's called knit one, make one. So now all you have to do in order to keep up with the pattern is you're gonna increase into the first and last stitch. That's why we've been knitting all along into those stitches. However, you're going to see that when you get to the row after you've done the increase, you're really gonna to have to look at your stitch to determine where you're at as far as within the one by one ribbing pattern. In other words, you're just, again, it's not complicated. It seems like it, but all you're gonna do is knit the stitch as you see it on that next row. So here I am, I'm knitting the stitches, the stitches as they are presented. I'm doing a purl and knit, a purl and knit, just as they are. And that's why my ribbing has formed so nicely. And then at the end, I'm going to do another knit one, make one increase. And then I'm going to show you what that's going to look like on your next row. Okay, so here we are. We're on the last stitch of row 10. We're just about ready to complete it. We're going to knit one and we're going to make one. So knitting again into the back of the loop of the same stitch and then increasing. So now we should have 32 stitches on our needle. And let's turn, let me get this tail row out of the way here. I'm thinking a rubber band. <laughs> I usually don't do it this way, but honestly you guys, I love the look of knitting, but knitting, I just, it's not my favorite. And there's a reason for that. I, there's just too much sewing involved and I know how to sew. In fact, I knew how to sew before I, I, I learned how to knit and crochet, but I just, I, I hate sewing these pieces together. I'm not trying to be negative or anything, but I really do. So that's why I like crochet better because it's easier to, to do things, you know, without the seams all right let's keep going so again we got to remember you're going to knit in the first stitch but you can see right here that this stitch is presenting itself now as a purl stitch so go ahead and just purl into that stitch and then this stitch is also representing itself as a purl and that's okay so now we're just gonna go ahead and continue on. And I forgot to turn my row counter here to 10 because we are on row 11. And we're just going to keep going, okay, with our one by one ribbing pattern. And the ends, as far as the increases go, and um, having some of the rows with the same stitches, okay? It doesn't matter, it's all in the seam. And remember when I said sewing, I don't like sewing seams? Well, that part I do like because it takes out that first stitch and you don't see it. So you just sew the seam up the right way and it's all good. And there are many ways to sew a seam and if you want, you can Look, those, I don't really have a lot of sewing uh, seam videos. In fact, I don't think I have one. And that's because I just, I just sew up my seams. I don't make a fuss about it. My patterns, my knitting patterns are super, super, super simple. 
so I don't want to get into the complicated sewing seams techniques. I'm just I'm not interested in that. I'm just interested in putting out a nice looking pattern. Because my stitches are so simple, I never worry about the seams. Okay, all right. So now, here we are. And again, now we've got two pearls. So go ahead and purl. And then, but remember, in that last stitch, we have to knit because we're always going to knit in the first and the last stitch. No matter how the first stitch and the last stitch present themselves, you always knit in those stitches. Okay, so after you finished row 11, we are going to repeat this pattern of the one by one ribbing for the next, let's see, three, sti three rows. So I want you to take this to row 14. Because if you remember, I told you that we're going to increase on every fifth row. So we're going to do the knit one and the first and last stitches, the one by one ribbing in between those stitches for four rows. Then on the fifth row, we will increase by making by knitting one and making one into the first and to the last stitch. And I want you to do that until you reach a total of 56 stitches. So we'll see each other back when we both have a much larger sleeve. Now that you've increased until 56 stitches, please continue working the one by one ribbing with a knit stitch in the first and last stitch until your sleeve panel reaches 20 inches. Okay. Now that we have got our one by one ribbing sleeve up to 20 inches, we're going to want to change our needle size to the larger needle. And I'm also going to uh, change to the longer one as well. So I want you to knit across with your 56 stitches, one row. Then on the next row, and this is all with this uh, new size now, Go ahead and hit the increase on one in the first and the last stitches, then knit another row, and then increase one more time. So now we'll be working across 60 stitches, and we are going to do that for the rest of the scarf portion. So once you get those four rows on, let's meet back here, and we'll discuss the scarf. Okay. Now that you added those four rows of knitting, and that was one row of just knitting across the 56 stitches, then on the next row you would have increased to two stitches, which was one make one, knit one in the first stitch, and knit one make one in the last stitch, then another row of just knitting across, and then this row that I just completed, which was knit one, make one in each front or first and last stitch, which gives us now a total of 60 stitches. And that's going to be the width or height of your scarf. Now what you need to do is you just need to go ahead and work your garter stitch until this piece measures from the bottom sleeve to the end 44 inches. And then when you're done with that, you can bind off and we'll talk about construction. All right, let's put this all together. For the construction of your sweater scarf, I have the schematic that's included. This is just right from the written pattern. So I'm showing you what you'll get if you, if you decide that you want the written pattern. Each section is just seamed together with the center back seam. So this section for this size is 44 inches on each panel, which gives us a total of 88 inches across. Okay, so you want to seam up the back, the center seam, and use whatever technique you're comfortable with. I know seaming is something that we all have different ways of doing it, and so I just leave that to you as far as that goes. Then you're going to want to seam up the sleeves so that your 
shrug or sweater scarf looks like this. The openings here are for your hands. That's where your hands will be when you have it on. So, and this part right here is also from the seams. This is also open. So you can tell right off the bat as soon as you get it done what, what you're looking at. So you're going to want to, again, center the back seam, seam that up, and then your sleeves. And all you're doing with the sleeves is you're creating a seam just over the one-by-one one ribbing portion of each panel. Now, how do I wear this thing? A lot of people ask this. It's If you've never worn one before, it's always kind of like, how does that go together? So what I did was I included this in the pattern, and it's how to wear so with the right side out, just center the back seam in between your shoulder blades. Then cross over the right sleeve to your left arm and then insert your left arm into that sleeve. Then cross over the left sleeve to your right arm and then stick your right arm into that sleeve opening. And you have created a sweater scarf. I really do hope that you enjoyed this pattern. If you did, could you please just give me a, a like? I'd really appreciate a thumbs up on this. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. I do put up uh, new patterns I try every Friday. So thanks again so much and you have a blessed day.